Okay, Chris, well, uh, the, the latest stage of the uh, development of Formula Thunder 5000, you've, uh, you've got the gearbox the box now. Tell us all about that, where it's come from and uh, how, it's come to, uh, how it's come to be. Well, it, it is, in an Australian sense, probably the technical highlight almost of the car. Um, everyone knows Hollinger is uh, world-renowned in terms of gearboxes, and what they've been able to do is adapt their um, uh, six-speed sequential gearbox to, to suit this car and it's meant making a new front end to their gearbox, including some drop gears so that the engine can stay as low as possible, and a bell housing to suit, you know, open wheeler type bell housing with all the suspension mounts on it, and integral oil tank, everything in. You know, I think even they're surprised at the slight complexity of it and how long it took, but the finished product is just brilliant. I'm really thrilled with it. Quite clearly for a company like that, I mean, they've obviously got a great deal of faith in the in the project to put in all this time and effort. Uh, yes, no, indeed. I think, um, look, I think to be honest, when we first sat down and spoke about it, which was at the beginning of the year, they probably thought I was a bit mad, uh, to be honest. But as time's gone on, I think they've understood and seen the reaction uh, that the, the concept's getting. And as I said, I, I couldn't be happier with what they've come up with. They've done a really terrific job and, uh, you know, it's almost a shame to get it dirty by running it, isn't it? So tell us about the reaction that you've been getting. I mean, since we saw you last time, I mean, obviously there's been you know, a lot more publicity out there. People are more aware of the of the category. Um, it's obviously you know got some potential because even V8 supercars sort of you know put their hand up and said they wanted something, propose something similar. I mean, how did you react to that? That was interesting. I mean, uh, I mean, in some ways it's flattering, uh, but I think when it, I think it was a pretty much a sort of a thought bubble idea um, from what I gather and when they looked at the some of the actual logistics of, of doing something from scratch um, I think the, the team owners pretty quickly said no that's not really our scene so I mean that's that's nice um, so and you know having two of anything never really works so um, I'm glad that was resolved uh, yes it's, it's kind of uh, flattering that they are amongst the people who will think this is a good idea and yes we've had a lot of good reaction both from here and overseas and uh, look I'm hoping once the car is running uh, on track etc etc that then we'll be able to cement a reasonable uh, pool of owners supporters. So now that you've got the transmission uh, as we said it's bolted on and how far away are you from getting the car out onto the track to do some testing? Uh, interesting question uh, because I've been saying for a few months now, you know, six weeks or so, but with something like this as we're learning a prototype and, you know, all the little things, the tiny little things um, take a little longer than you'd think. I still now hope about six weeks we might be able to uh, have some quiet running somewhere. So what about the concept for the series? You looked at uh, you looked at doing a summer series, possibly in both Australia and New Zealand. Um, is that still the plan at the moment? Very much so. I mean, that was always designed to to, to do this away from the you know hurly burly of everything else that goes on in, in Australia. So the idea of a summer series is, is, has been there from the start. Um, yeah, a lot of support in New Zealand as well. The tracks are all very keen. So that is still the plan, um, and that would you know kick off at the end of next year. Um, in the interim, though, we expect to have a handful of events within Australia for, for people who've got cars to get used to them, get them sorted, all that kind of thing. And uh, you know, I'd have to say there's been a number of good events have approached us saying, "Hey, we kind of like this. You know, uh, what what can you do?" So um, that's the plan. But certainly, the focus will be on the summer series because. Uh, as well that allows you to get some people from overseas to uh, maybe come and take part. So what do you think uh, the car figure, the numbers might be when, you, uh, when you're up and running? Are you, uh, are you confident of having a, a decent field and how many do you need before you actually start production of these things? Um, yes, the, look I think pragmatically and, and uh, production wise and whatever we, we need to have a first up batch of a dozen cars and that's always been our public target you know and uh, pretty shortly we'll be asking interested parties to get serious and uh, once we've got a you know that, that base then, then away we'll go and, and it'll go on from there how, how many we end up with um, who's to know um, you know clearly it'd be nice to have a, a decent grid um, but you know small steps but if we can get 14 or 15 cars say for year one I'd be really happy with that. So in terms of now that you've come, come further down the track with the prototype, I mean, what sort of cost are we looking at now? I mean, if somebody's interested in getting involved, what do you think they're looking at? What sort of investment, I mean, to buy the thing and to run it for a, for a season? Um, well, I think we're narrowing in on the cost. It's going to be about $260,000. Now, 
you know, that's that's still a reasonable amount of money. But I mean, if, if you compare with, say, if you want to go buy an Indy car, which isn't totally dissimilar, uh, that'd cost you half a million without an engine. You know, and a V8 supercar is not a, not a cheap thing these days either. So it's going to be around that kind of cost. Uh, some of that is to do with the fact that we've put as much bulletproofness into it as we can, so that the the actual running costs won't be out of order. Um, and I, I think people will be surprised how economically a car of this performance will be able to run uh, at races. So if people out there are interested at all, whether they're from Australia, New Zealand or anywhere around the world, is there a website or some uh, where they can go to get in contact with you and express some interest? Uh, we've got a Facebook page, you know, 21st Century stuff, uh, Formula Thunder 5000, so, and, and contacts through there. And, uh, and of course, we're based here at Ball and Racing in Melbourne. Okay, Chris, good luck with it. I uh, look forward to seeing it uh, at its next step, which hopefully will be on the track. But for now, thanks for joining us in Pit Lane again. Yeah, no, not half as much as I'm looking forward to, <laughs> believe me.